Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about Yellow Whis, and this is not a finished deck profile. So before you guys just kind of like look at the build and click off, you're going to want to listen to this. This is a 58 card deck. Now you guys know me, I'm not recommending you guys play a 58 card main deck. That's just not really viable in any way. Basically, what's been happening is I've been talking about Yellow Whis a lot because some of the new set 16 cards actually indirectly support it. And I wanted to kind of theory craft a build for that. But I'll be honest with you guys, between making content, testing stuff for set 16, and doing other stuff in my regular life, I unfortunately didn't have time to dedicate to perfectly crafting a Whis deck. So what I did is I came up with the concept for the deck that I, you know, wanted to build. And we have to work on trimming this down. We have to work on, you know, making it more efficient. And that's what today's video is going to do. We're going to talk about how the deck works, how the deck operates. So for those of you guys that are new to the deck, new to the archetype, you'll get some good info there. And I will talk about how I think we can make changes as we go through. So we'll get into it. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell, so don't miss a video. Let's not waste any more time. Cause I think this might be a little bit of a long one, but anyways, we got to start with the leader. Auto wins card attacks, draw one, auto wins per turn if it's your opponent's turn. When a yellow skillless battle card with 15k power is placed in your drop from your combo, you may play it from your drop area. So that's one of the main ways your leader is going to be generating value. And that is a really, really good effect. There are a lot of effects in this deck that I think are very, very good. The main problem is though, with this compared to other good yellow leaders like Icarus and even Trunks in set 16, for example, Whis needs a lot of main deck space to get the most value out of his inherent engine. And that is a big problem when it comes to deck building. Again, I think a lot of the cards in the deck are actually pretty solid, but we'll talk about some ways that we can maybe trim that down as we go through. But anyways, you're awakened. When you're at least four or less, or you have a yellow unison card with a specified cost of two in play, you may draw one on tap one, then add cards from light to hand until you have six left. On the back side, attack, draw one. Same auto for comboing skillless guys into play defensively. And then activate main once per turn for a yellow. Choose one yellow, Sun Goku or Vegeta with energy cost of two in your battle area and place in the owner's drop. Then choose up to one yellow battle card from your deck or hand with energy cost of three and the X Evolve skill and the same character name as the card you place in the owner's drop with this skill. Play it, then shuffle your deck if you look through it. So that's a long winded way to say pick a Goku or Vegeta and then EX evolve from your deck on top of it. That is again, another very, very good effect because we don't have to have these like, you know, two card combos in our hand. We can just pull it right from the deck for the same amount of energy. That is honestly pretty solid. So getting into the main deck cards, probably pretty mandatory is the Vados cosmic aid. So we have a two drop yellow unison that helps us awaken auto when your opponent attacks, you may choose a yellow skillless in your hand or drop in combo with it. If you do negate this skill for the turn. Now this is one of your main ways to generate a crazy amount of value in this deck, because keep in mind, this auto can be used even when Vados is attacked. Now, if you guys know the rules of the game, when a unison is attacked, the, the controller of that unison does not get a defensive combo step. But this is an auto so this procs anyway and puts that card in the combo area and the power gets added to this at the end of the battle so even though you technically didn't get to combo it manually you still get to place in the combo area with that auto and that can make vados a 20k unison for one attack per turn which is really strong and then your leader can play that skillless um if it you know if you haven't used that auto already but anyways plus one activate main choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards or unison cards and switch it to rest mode this effect is actually much better than it was back then because we lost three copies of power of a super sand being able to interact with super defensive unisons like majin buu four drop for blue or machika bora for yellow is actually really really strong minus four activate main play up to two skillless battle cards with 15k from your deck or drop then shuffle your deck to look through it the effect's okay probably won't come up all that often but it is an option there for you guys but anyways one other unison that i was kind of toying with the idea of is Android 20 and Dr. Mew Hellish Accomplices. Auto once per turn, if it's your turn, when you activate an Evolve or Union skill, add a marker to this card. We can evolve a lot in this deck, so that's pretty good. Auto once per turn, if it's your turn, when you remove a marker from this card using a Spirit Boost skill, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode, ignoring barrier, and KO it. So there is a new card from set 16 that's gonna allow us to Spirit Boost uh, pretty much whenever we want and proc that effect um, you know, between that five drop Goku that we'll talk about later. And this card will be KOing two battle cards per turn, one of which ignoring barrier. That's really, really good. I, I think that's a pretty cool combo. But again, because of the deck space, we might not be able to fit this reliably. But again, I just wanted to point out that I think it's a cool combo. Activate main plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Minus two, activate main, add up to one mono yellow battle card, energy cost of five or less, and the evolve skill from your drop to your hand. Probably won't ever come up in this type of deck, but 
that is there for you one other card that i did include here is ss4 vegeta prideful transformation which of course you can play in a unison reliant deck but again the space is just nowhere to be found like maybe if you'd made some real drastic changes you could fit it um possibly like maybe cutting this whole extra card engine but i guess we'll get to that later but anyways we got to talk about the Whis cards that support the Whis deck so we have Whis a helping hand one drop in my opinion four of mandatory card when this card's played like a top five add up to one yellow skillless battle card or yellow unison with a specified cost of two among them to your hand and then shuffle your deck so it searches your unisons and your skillless auto when you use a skill, uh, yellow skillless battle card in a combo draw one and then you can't activate the auto on this card for the turn so basically limit one and this came out before limit one was actually a thing so yeah this is a real important engine piece and man like if you have this plus the Vados unison in play and then you're playing the skillless cards from your leader you're generating some super crazy pluses like this is just an insane engine to have set up turn one Whis, turn two Vados, start comboing your skillless defensively it's very very strong then we have Whis sweet gathering i believe this is a new card from the most recent tournament pack and it reads as follows permanent leader cards a uh Whis card you have two or more yellow skillless battle cards with original powers of 15k and play in rest mode your opponent can't attack your leader card now i don't know how often this will come up because you might be making evolve plays or your opponent might be removing this card or the skillless cards but it is a cool added effect but the main thing here is activate main once per turn add up to one yellow skillless battle card with 15k power from your deck to your hand then shuffle your deck this is huge for this deck because not having your skillless cards in hand is a big big problem there was a bulma card that came out with the archetype that basically allowed you to combo with skillless from your deck but the bulma itself had zero combo power so this basically serves a similar role to that but you can you know use the skills cards in your hand in other ways but you can also just keep adding cards to your hand over the course of multiple turns so if your opponent's not able to kill this thing you get a lot of added value out of that notice how so many of the cards i've talked about so far generate you a lot of value um i guess more so if they go unchecked one drops are obviously not very hard to remove in this game but they can net you a lot of value then we have master's aid Weiss. so this is a tp that i think came out with Weiss, or maybe the set after but anyways auto for the card is mono yellow and you add one card from light to hand when this card's played play up to one yellow skillless battle card with 15k power from your drop so this is actually super good for the deck because it's a proactive way to play your skillless battle cards from the drop area which the deck didn't really have until this card came out that's really nice and having that little bit of self awakens also helpful because being at five life is the sweet spot at least for freeze army reinforcements and then obviously being at four is great to turn on your super combos so that's why i only have two slotted here i don't know if i'd play more than two um depending on what the meta looks like if they're really never attacking your life maybe going up to three but yeah these other weeses do seem very very essential at four uh in my opinion at least then we have the skillless battle card so goku and vegeta very simple but the question is do we play the full eight suite i think the answer is yes but maybe there's a universe where we can try out playing three and three now that we have Whis suite gathering because all together that would technically be 10 copies of your skillless cards and four of those cards could continuously add the skillless from your deck to your hand so that could work it could be three and three and that could be a good way to conserve some deck space possibly but then next up we have to talk about the deities disciples vegeta and goku so they both ex evolve over their corresponding characters for one and they get to draw a card which is nice uh, but mostly you want to be evolving these from the deck because um you know that means you don't have to draw these cards to actually do that so vegeta's double striker very similar to bark resolute when your opponent activates a counter you can switch it back to active mode and then if it gets removed you can basically play the vanilla goku um, from your deck or drop area so they have what's called floating effects if they die they do something that's really really strong again very high value um cards that are in this deck goku same thing if he dies you can play the vegeta from your deck or drop and then when he attacks you can choose a battle card in rest mode and ko it he himself also has critical so again another another place you might be able to conserve deck space is cutting these guys down to two each because you can fetch them from the deck technically but then you run the risk of you know drawing them and not having any in your deck or having them in your life which which should be rare in theory but uh that just seems a little bit more risky and again having them in your hand is not the worst thing as long as you can get your skillless battle cards established so that's kind of where the tricky thing comes in but next up i want to talk about the two pieces of set 16 indirect support for this deck the first one being ssb vegeta future on the line so unfortunately we can't ex evolve him in this deck because we're not playing any vegeta's cost of one and there aren't really any good ones to play in this deck but we do get that last auto there once per turn this card attacks choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and rest mode on a barrier and ko it so this can actually be evolved from the deck thanks to the leader's effect not specifying too too much 
But yeah, it is really nice because the Goku can KO battle cards in rest mode, but Vegeta can do it ignoring barriers. So if you don't really want the aggression from Vegeta, Didi's Disciple, Future on the line is a really, really good option that I think is good in the deck. I think two is probably the right number. Maybe you can go with one, but generally the rule with one ofs in Dragon Ball Super is you want to try to avoid them because they can end up in your life or stuck in your hand, but at least if they end up stuck in your hand, your super combo could potentially bottom deck it. So that's an option there. But anyways, now we talk about SSB Goku Future on the line. This is a five drop, so you're not playing it from your deck, but you can evolve it over any yellow Goku with energy cost of three or less. It's got dual attack. And then auto when this card is played using EX Evolve, switch it to active mode so you can swing and then evolve it to get more attacks. Auto once return spirit boost one when this card attacks, draw one. Then choose a your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. So that's what I was talking about before with the uh, Android 20 Mew Unison and the synergy there because you're spirit boosting, you're KOing something and drawing a card, and then you'll KO another card via Mew's effect. Again, because of deck space constraints, that might be just a little bit too cute to abuse, but. I do think I would play two copies of this card in a finalized build of Whis. I do think it's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, I don't think this is really where you would cut things, but um, I mean, I, I could be wrong, of course. But anyways, guys, we're going to continue through the rest of this. But firstly, we do have a word from today's video's sponsor. Yo, Dragon Ballers, real quick, I need to let you guys know about two events that are coming up soon, being hosted by PPG. All the info will be down in the description, but we have the Dragon Ball Super Card Game Fest from March 26th to the 27th. This is going to be the first ever event where they are trying out the sideboarded best of one format. Besides that, it'll just be a celebration of the Dragon Ball Super Card Game, so you're not going to want to miss it. The other one is for organized play through the Pro Play Tour. We have the regional qualifier April 2nd in Kentucky Shots of the Midwest, so you're definitely not going to want to miss that. Shout out to PPG because they run awesome tournaments, but also besides that, this is the thing I've been concerned about in the past where these tournaments just don't get enough advertisement. So shout out to PPG for doing more and putting in more work to advertise these events. I hope to see you guys there. Let's get back into the video. All right, guys, shout out to PPG. Anyways, let's get back into this. So we're talking about the extra card lineup here. So this has become a mainstay type of engine for most yellow decks is to play enough yellow extra cards to facilitate Mecha Freezer, Barker Post, and Goku Steadfast Assistance. Again, because of our deck being 58 cards, maybe this whole engine has to go and you have to get your defenses in other avenues. But I'll be honest with you guys, that's going to make Whis a lot worse than just about every other yellow deck if you have to do that. Like, let's say you cut all this and maybe instead of Repose, you play Nimbus. And maybe instead of Steadfast Assistance, you played um, Prival Transformation Vegeta. Those could work, but they're just honestly not as good as these two cards. So the question is, do you play all these extra cards in your deck to make these two cards live? The answer is probably yes, and maybe you have to find space uh, in other avenues, like like we talked about cutting the skill list or maybe cutting the DD's Disciples down to two each. But anyways, uh, the one power, because that's all we can play. The two, Black Kamehameha, maybe three, but again, I didn't really want to go to 59 cards, so that's why it's a two. Freeze Arm Reinforcements, which is probably the best extra card at this point, at least because it's free. And uh, yeah, getting down to five life is going to be pretty important for making sure this is live, which is why Master's Aid Weiss seems a lot more helpful. And then two Final Flash, just for the flexibility of, need, of whether you need this or Black Kamehameha. But yeah, that's going to facilitate our repost and our Steadfasts. But again, maybe this could be like Nimbus or Forbidden Power, and maybe this could be Profit Transformation. That could be the way to go about it. And the rest of it is really just um, our yellow staples. So one cooler, that seems pretty much mandatory for any yellow deck. One Bergamo, maybe not super mandatory anymore because we've run out of ways to tap things, at least for free. Like power into Bergamo was always just super plus because at most you'd be spending two energy on Bergamo. But now with power going to one, the other ways you're going to tap things are going to require you to pay energy most likely. So Bergamo is always going to be a minimum of three energy play for the most part. And if you're doing that, you're not doing much practically on offense. So the stars kind of have to align a little bit perfectly for that to work out. So maybe Bergamo is not even worth playing this deck anymore because of that. But anyways, just finishing up four kill and super combo. Of course, you have to play it. I, I don't really think you play Zamasu or anything else in this deck. I think Krillin's probably just the way to go. And then uh, the one chomp of the one secret ID, just a you know match made in heaven. You want to be able to have that removal. You do want to um, you know be a little bit weary of your drop area for both your extra card count and being able to recycle your skillless battle cards. But um, you know if you guys are get if you guys get experience with the deck, you'll be able to parse that out. And then um, secret rare spot. This could be so many things. It could be Pan. It could be Kai. It could be Super Seventeen. You have a lot of different options for SCRs here, as well as Heroine's Lineage if you're on a bit more of a budget. Now, what's funny is the estimated price here is $437, uh, but Pan is probably 200 of those dollars. 
So if you played Heroine's Lineage, this would actually probably be a much more uh, budget-friendly deck. And of course, when you make other cuts, it'll be even more budget-friendly. But yeah, guys, those are the main things I want to talk about with Whis. I'm not sure if I want to keep this entire uh, extra card engine just to play Reposed and Steadfast. These cards are super broken, don't get me wrong. But it might not just be able to fit in the deck because I do want to get down to about probably 53 cards at most. Uh, again, maybe you can chop the Skillless to 3 each, maybe the Disciples. Those are the main places that I'm seeing cuts. Dr. Mew and, and um, Android 20 probably has to go as well. It's probably just way too cute to work in this deck, although it is a cool synergy once again. Maybe there's some other deck you can play that leans heavily into this combo. That'd be kind of cool. But anyways, guys, of course, I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yo, Dragon Ballers. Really, really appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you guys so much. If you like the video, definitely consider dropping a like, as it really does help me out a lot. And if you guys want to consider watching the next video, Joey, it should be... What's Joey. up? What's up? How about OG Toa? OG Toa from the Anniversary Box? Yeah, is it any good? Ivan, I think you're like two years late, bro. Oh, man. I'll get some back to Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, no.